I had already cut all the grooves and stuff in this thing, so we kind of missed out on that. Where you got a chance of skin drumming, which would be right in here. And drumming is where the skin doesn't get all the way down close to the form. It wants to, like, it doesn't go in that groove there. It wants to come out over it, and they call that drumming. So the more paste I can get in there, the better off. Always look for that line down the back as a center point. tone showing. take a lot of clay for a near base. This is just the start. The good thing on these forms they give me a center point, that little dot right there. You don't get the detail out of the plastic one as you can with the clay. Like in the which I, I could still do it with the plastic ones but I'd have to add a lot of clay to get the wrinkles mm -hmm. in the back. You see how this ridge is right here? You don't get that with a plastic earbud. You have to build it out of clay. Because that's actually a muscle. The muscles coming along across here. That's what makes your ear, that's what makes their ears move back and forth. If you don't know the anatomy, then you're just kind of <laughs> guessing. You gotta know where all the muscles lay in the ear. You gotta know where all the muscles lay on top of the head, around the eyes. You gotta know all that stuff. If you want your mounts to turn out, it's halfway decent anyway. And I just like molding stuff with my fingers. Get a little creative with some things. oil base just gives me a longer a little bit longer time to work with it and tomorrow I'll be able to come and do some adjustments if I need to because mm. it won't be hard hardened up and the, the uh, potter's clay will most likely be hard tomorrow depending on how much moisture is in the cape but usually I've got a good two days to work with the critter clay. If it's a young elk, it might have more hair follicles or hair eyelashes up there. Older elk don't tend to have it because they wear them off. You can see he's got some little ones up here. I had whitetail, you know, these right here on whitetail come way out here. Right. Yeah. He's got a few down here. They've got a few out here on their muzzle. But, uh, they're just not very long on this elk. They're short. White tails, you know, they, they're like a cat almost. Right. Symmetry is another thing that you have to make sure on your eyes. If your eyes aren't perfect, both sides look identical. Then 
you're gonna have a weird looking animal. <laughs> he might be cross-eyed, he might not. He might be looking one way, <laughs> the other, <laughs> one eye. But they can do that. I mean, it's like them two deer fighting over there. When I put the eyes in on them, the, I turn them around. One eye, this eye on this side will be looking in. The eye on the other side will be looking around this way because he's trying, he's hooking around like that. Good thing about elk, you can take the horns off, or their antlers off, and it allows you to get in places with the glue that you normally can't get into. thing really seasy. It's got a little bit shorter hair normally. Got a lot longer hair to deal with. Makes it harder to sew up. keeping that corner of that eye in place where it needs to be that when I put those in that centers up everything that that whole eyelid it centers it up right where it needs to be and usually everything else falls right in place so where that tear duct comes to the eye if you can get that centered up the rest of the eyelid will shape over the eyeball like it's supposed to Tails over the elk, they get that. And it's it can lay different sometimes too. It can have it can have a ridge here and a ridge over here down the jawline, or it can be just droopy in the middle. Most of the elk droop right in the middle. Put some antlers on this bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> 